also got to reference some of the harmonics for the string stuff. Yeah, right. It's just, it's so interesting to me how, like, you know, I think, you know, something like the whole thing that kind of started with fashion by the way, and you go from the bird and it's just, when I start with the bird, it's just, you know, I'm always very shy to show how, how, what I find the type of music is coming from. Mm -hmm. I wonder if for the brass ones, because like on brass instruments where the soldering points are, there's like a little lip, so that like every time, like if there's like one thing that's coming through, and then there's like mm -hmm. a little lip that the that it creates resistance inside that helps create some of the overtones. Yeah, so it's a little different. Mm -hmm. So you're playing for the time.
Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
victory of Christ is won. All of his triumph has begun. Hallelujah. <laughs> of death have gone the wind. But Christ their legion has joined. Flesh out of hell, spirit of The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gates of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy of the day's Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated for the readings. Readings from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And then he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so we have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh. 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. When the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to two of the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. It was still dark. The red streaks of morning were just starting to appear in the sky when Mary Magdalene stole out of the house and down the street. She couldn't sleep anyway, so she might as well go to the tomb and spend some quiet time there, some quiet time with him. She hadn't been able to visit since it happened. First, there was the terrible day itself, too unspeakable for words. And then it was the Sabbath, and nothing could be done then. 
So now it was her first opportunity to try and make sense of things and to be sure nothing else could happen to Jesus. She was just rounding the bend into the garden and there it was. The tomb that should be sealed was gaping open. Dear God, what now, she sobbed as she hurried over to the wide open tomb. One look inside confirmed her worst fears. There were all the burial clothes, but someone had taken the body. She ran back to tell Peter, and he and John ran off to see for themselves. But she was too spent to go with them. Too much grief. Too much tension. And now this. It sapped the energy right out of her. Summoning her remaining strength, she headed back again. Rounding the bend again, she met Peter and John heading back. Peter just looked at her sadly and shook his head. He couldn't say a word, but the look on his face told the whole story. All she could do was slump down against the cold, hard stone of the tomb and weep. Finally, the gut-wrenching sobs that she had been holding in while she was with the elders came in wave after wave. She didn't have to put on a brave face anymore. She was all alone. She was all alone. Perhaps that phrase described her situation better than any other. She was all alone. Then a strange thing happened. The cold stone of the tomb felt warm. How could this be? The sun wasn't even up. And as she looked, the opening of the tomb seemed to glow. Curious as to what was happening now, Mary crept to the tomb and looked inside, and there was an angel. No, it was two angels sitting where Jesus' body had been. Woman, why are you weeping? They seemed to ask, yet not really talking. They've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him, she said, not knowing if she was really talking to angels or not. Just then, she heard someone coming up the path, whistling as they walked. It's the caretaker, she thought. He'll know where Jesus is. And as she turned toward him, the sun suddenly broke through, lighting him from behind, causing her to squint. Please, sir, she began to say, but suddenly she was overwhelmed with grief and couldn't utter a word. All she could do was sob. Hey, lady, what's the matter, the caretaker said. Why are you crying? <clears throat> Finally, she found her voice. Oh, please, sir, tell me where you have laid the body and I'll take care of things. The man simply said, Mary. And immediately she knew. It was Jesus. It was Jesus and he was alive. She couldn't believe it. All she could do was stammer out, Teacher! And once again the tears flowed, but this time they were tears of overwhelming joy. Then he sent her on her way to tell the disciples the news that he was alive 
and was going to the Father. That's the thing about this story. It's not until Jesus calls her by name that Mary recognizes the risen Lord. In the blink of an eye, she is transported from the darkness of grief to the joy of the risen Christ because she knows him in relationship. Relationship. That's what this whole endeavor has been about from Bethlehem to the tomb. Relationship. That's what God wanted in the first place. Relationship. And so God sent Jesus to tell and ultimately to show that God's very nature is love. And that God is a God of relationship. God is not some vengeful beast that must be appeased through fear and sacrifice. God is love and wants to be in harmony and relationship with all of creation. That's what Jesus came to tell. That's what humanity couldn't hear, couldn't comprehend. And that's what God's love was strong enough to overcome. And how do we treat this love? What is our response to this invitation to relationship? It seems like every day we hear more and more stories of hatred and violence. It's there all around us. So much violence, so much hate, so much anger, so much intolerance. The very same things that put Jesus on a cross 2,000 years ago. Because people couldn't understand God's love then any more than people can understand it now. But we know differently. We who are gathered here know that the story doesn't end on the cross. It doesn't end in a sealed tomb. It goes on and on just as the resurrected Jesus burst forth to bring new life and God's love to the world in a different way. It was in relationship that Mary knew Jesus as he called her by name. And it is into relationship that Jesus invites us as he calls each of us by name. For it is relationship, relationship with God and relationship with one another that is the key. It is relationship that we have missed so desperately since the pandemic. And it is the resurrection of relationship that we are beginning to experience again. And it is relationship with one another and with God that we will journey together into the new dawn of Jesus' resurrection to explore our call to be St. Paul's in these new and uncertain times. Once Mary recovered from the shock of finding Jesus alive, he gave her a job. She is sent to go and tell. And so she did. And as a result, in the Orthodox Church, Mary Magdalene is known as the Apostle to the Apostles. But it wasn't easy. The disciples wouldn't believe her. It was too much, too impossible to be true. And it was not until Jesus stood among them that night that they would believe. We, too, are sent to go and tell. 
We are to go and tell everyone that Jesus is alive and better than ever and that the God of love who made you and loves you just the way you are wants to be in relationship with you. It won't be easy. People won't believe us either. It's too much. It's too impossible to be true. How could God want a relationship with me? But it is true. And it's our message to share. And that's the good news of Easter. Not the bunnies and not the flowers and not the fancy feast. It's that God loves us this much and continues to love us over and over and over again until we follow that longing, that longing that leads us into relationship with God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son called Mary Magdalene to be a witness of his resurrection, grant that we who have been raised with him may have the courage to answer when he calls us each by name, that we may boldly share the good news of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us repeat together the articles of our faith as contained in the Nicene Creed on page 5 of the bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from right, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him and all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, you may stand or kneel as you prefer.
Alleluia. What was dead shall live. What was dark shall shine. What was forgotten shall be remembered. For the Lord is risen and walks among us. Let us confidently bring before God the needs of all our world, asking God for renewal, saying, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. God of life, in gratitude and great joy, we laud you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection. On this day, give us hope, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. On this feast day, which brings joy to all Christian believers, may we commit ourselves to work toward the unity of the church, that Christ's body may be one, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Honoring the gift of Christ's risen body, may we rise to serve all those whose needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, for all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no more power over us, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who suffer and all who mourn, that today the Lord God will wipe away all tears, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we be one faith with all who have died in Christ, for our life is hid with Christ in God, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. God of life, we thank you for the mystery planted in us, the paradox of life from death and from community, from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death, and for the rising which brings us life. We pray as we live through Jesus, the risen one, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace. Thanks for the good words. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah, right. Yeah. Please be seated for the announcements. Uh, first, let me, let me all welcome you to St. Paul's this glorious Sunday morning. It's good to see everyone. Uh, please make yourself known to us after the service if there's any way we could be of service to you. And special thanks to the choir, all the musicians, and the altar guild, which created this lovely Easter uh, experience. So thank you to all who have uh, spent a lot of time here, and we're very glad to have you now. And now we have uh, another announcement from our senior warden. Good morning, can you hear me? Good morning. Yeah. Perfect. Good morning, happy Easter. I'm Greg Jackson. Yep. Greg Jackson, your uh, senior warden, member of the vestry, and continuing with uh, announcements being made by various uh, vestry members. So happy to be with all of you today. Just like to echo what uh, Reverend uh, Swanson said, and thank everybody for being here today on this great day. I want to thank um, the, the choir uh, for the beautiful music. So Felix and Tara, thank you so much. 
Uh, we also have some guest musicians here today performing, so we want to thank them. So Jerry Figueroa, Hales King, and Cam Cameron uh, Guerrero. So thank you very much uh, for being here. So I want to invite you also to uh, Kaler Hall after the service for uh, coffee and fellowship and relationship building, as Father uh, uh, Larkin was uh, talking about in his sermon. Uh, hopefully we can enhance some of the relationships that we currently have and build new ones. So join us for coffee. Uh, while we're down there having coffee, I believe the uh, Easter egg hunt has um, already been set up for the children, so that'll be taking place in the courtyard. There is uh, a special announcement from the choir, and they are selling t-shirts. So they created um, an, uh, an original design by choir member Alexis Renteria. Uh, the design, thank you, Alexis. Uh, the design shares our choir motto, Artist in Ministry. And we think wearing the t-shirts will be an important demonstration of the joy we take in being members of St. Paul's music program and a way to share about our church and the community every time we wear them. There are three sizes, and they are $25 each. And, and there will be members of the choir in the labyrinth afterwards and down in the parish hall selling uh, t-shirts. You can pay various ways, Zelle, check, cash. They'll take it any way they can, right? So thank you in supporting them. And then I'm going to point out a couple of um, uh, announcements that start on page 14 and continue on to page 15. There's uh, upcoming baptism opportunities. There's an out outreach project and a f April fundraiser at Topper's Pizza, which is Tuesday, April 23rd. So thank you for participating. I really appreciate that. Um, keep the bulletin and keep those announcements and do the things that are important to you. So thank you very much. Now, at this time, I want to give an update uh, in regard to the interim uh, clergy. I don't, for some of you, you may not be aware, but uh, Reverend Susan, uh, a couple of months ago, um, announced that she needed to take a long-term uh, leave of absence. So she has been home healing. So I would ask all of us to continue to keep Reverend Susan, John, and their family in your prayers as she continues to heal. Um, during the last couple of months, the vestry has been working with the diocese to find interim clergy to help us. Um, there's not just, you know, um, a bench of standby interim clergy ready to, you know, step up and make it to the big league. So uh, it's been an interesting process, but we are extremely fortunate to have two individuals that are going to help us uh, continue to do the work that we need to do. So. Um, Reverend, as, as Lisa mentioned and announced last week, we have Reverend uh, Vicki Moradian from All Saints by the Sea in Montecito that's going to help us out on a part-time basis. She's going to start with us on Sunday, April 21st. So she will lead one Sunday service a month, and then she will also be in the office two days a week. And she is going to be the priest in charge of our outreach and pastoral care. It's what she does. It's all saints already. And so it's going to be a perfect fit. And she's already volunteered to bring back the Wednesday healing service that we used to have. So she's really stepping in. And we're very excited to welcome Reverend Vicki to St. Paul's. We also have Reverend Greg Larkin, who has stepped forward. <laughs> coming out of retirement to help us, uh, Reverend Greg is going to be the priest in charge. He's going to oversee the day-to-day -day operation and all the things that take place to run this church uh, successfully. Uh, he will be in the office also two days a week. He'll work with church staff. He'll work with the vestry. He'll work with the parish administrator just to keep everything rolling. So we appreciate uh, Reverend Greg. He's going to lead up to three services per month, and uh, we can't thank him enough for coming out of retirement, so thank you, Reverend Greg. We're fortunate enough to, to, um, to have additional clergy that helps out on a rotating basis as well, so we will still have 
for some time, Reverend Swan, uh, Dick Swanson helping out. So, until he heads up north to Washington this summer. Uh, we also have Father Anthony who will be able to help out and do uh, leading services on a rotating basis. And then we have our own very own Drew Darby Seminary uh, yeah. intern that will be handling some of the sermons as well. So really feel that we're in a great spot right now. Um, really think we're very fortunate compared to some of the other parishes. But really looking forward to, um, again, just doing the work that we need to do. We appreciate all your contributions. And um, if you haven't been here for a while and this is your first time back, let's keep coming back. We have some really good things taking place. And as the sign above the door says, let no one be a stranger. You're all welcome. And we appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. The only thing I would add about the t-shirts the that are being sold by the choir is that, as many of you know, uh, a number of people in the choir are planning on going to Europe this summer to sing in the mass concert in several places, including uh, St. Francis's home in Assisi. So that's a, that's a, a wonderful thing, and uh, I'd sort of like to go along myself, but I'll be up in Canada or someplace. We, let us continue with the offertory. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give god thanks and praise it is truly right to glorify you father and to give you thanks for you alone are god living and true dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and we glorify your name as we sing. claim you, holy God, gracious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us through the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, 
you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your presence, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this wine. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you. Lord, we pray that your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit, may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctify them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in the ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom of men, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Now please join us in praying with our siblings in Christ who are with us online and receiving communion spiritually. Dearest Lord Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of the Eucharist. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we are not all together in our church today to receive the bread and wine made holy, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. Fill us with your light and nourish us with your, your word and spirit. Amen. This is the banquet of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who fear you have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. 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 of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us indeed have good times by praying together the prayer of thanksgiving on the top of page 10 of the bulletin. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace of the Lord Jesus. May Christ's light shine in your hearts so that you may bring the joy and hope of Easter to others. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.